And for the White House perspective on the debt ceiling vote, we have White House Communications Director Ben LeBolt joining us now. Hey, Ben, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, so let's talk about this deal. There's been a few progressive Democrats who have been slamming it. Um, what is the White House telling them? And is, is there really an effort to try to persuade them at this point? Um, well, sure. Thanks for having me, Caitlin. Uh, let's take a step back and, and put some context around this. I mean, this if the government, if Congress does not pass this bill, it would be the first time in U.S. history that the government defaults on our debt, which could have catastrophic implications. It could tip us into a recession. It could cause 8 million jobs. Uh, it could hit borrowing costs around the country and certainly uh, retirement accounts. It would have a catastrophic impact on the American people. Uh, so we think it's critical that Congress uh, act quickly to pass this legislation uh, before June 5th. Um, secondly, for progressive Democrats, um, if you have continually voted uh, for the signature accomplishments of, of this administration, which have led to the creation of 12.7 million jobs, uh, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, uh, infrastructure being rebuilt across the country, um, a clean energy industry, the largest investment in clean energy ever getting off the ground, um, this bipartisan budget agreement protects those programs. And it's critical that, that you vote to support uh, this agreement as well. It's a bipartisan compromise. Not every side got everything uh, that we wanted. That's the nature of divided government uh, and, of, and of governing in general. Uh, but the president believes that there's enough here for Democrats to support. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned this is a bipartisan compromise. I mean, the president had said before that he wouldn't negotiate over the debt ceiling. There's clearly been a negotiation. What changed? I disagree with you on that front, uh, Caitlin. The president said from the beginning he wouldn't negotiate over default. Uh, he's certainly not doing that, and he's not doing it on uh, Republicans' terms. They passed a bill on April 26th that said there needed to be a 22 percent cut um, to programs across the federal government, essential programs for hardworking Americans like health care and like education, uh, or they'd let the government default. That's not what's happening here. He said all along he would negotiate uh, over the budget. He presented his budget on March 9th. Republicans responded with theirs on April 26th. And as soon as they did, he picked up the phone. He invited congressional leadership to the White House. He assigned a negotiating team to go to Capitol Hill um, and to negotiate this bipartisan budget agreement. And instead of those 22 percent cuts, um, it's really got flat spending for the next two years. It extends the debt ceiling uh, for a couple of years to make sure that we don't default on our debt. And it protects essential programs like Social, social Security and Medicare. It includes an increase in funding uh, for veterans that the president fought for. So, again, what we've got here is a bipartisan budget agreement um, and the president was clear all along he was willing to negotiate over the budget. And, Ben, you mentioned that this is uh, kind of the reality of divided government here. I mean, this is the first time that we really see on this kind of big deal the president and McCarthy coming to an agreement here. I I'm curious what the White House, what the president learned about working with McCarthy. Did the president's perception of him change at all. And, and is this, you know, a, a precursor for what we could see down the line in terms of working with the speaker on other major issues? Well, President Biden has a long history of bipartisanship dating back to his uh, decades uh, in the Senate, his time as vice president and even this presidency. Uh, he's negotiated a couple of big things like the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the Chips and Science Act to build semiconductors in this country uh, in the first two years of the administration, when many people said bipartisanship was dead and the president wouldn't be able to get it done. Uh, this was a good faith negotiation. The president worked with all, all four congressional leaders, as well as the speaker, uh, directly to close in on this final agreement. Um, and, uh, and we think it's going to result in something uh, very important for the American people, which is making sure the economy doesn't go off the cliff and that all of the economic gains of the last two years are preserved. And Ben, just quickly here, um, what is next for the White House in terms of agenda items now that we are expecting this to pass? Well, I think you'll hear uh, more about the president's economic vision uh, in the weeks ahead. Um, really, he has uh, fought against trickle-down economics, which for decades he doesn't think has been effective, and instead talked about investing uh, in America. You're seeing manufacturing come back. 
uh, in, in this country. You're seeing uh, an end uh, to uh, a reversal of offshoring. Some of these industries that had been built overseas um, in the past few years in China, which have been gaining in infrastructure and semiconductors and clean energy, uh, we're bringing those industries uh, back to America. So I think you'll hear more um, from the president on that front. There's also some things in the president's unity agenda that we believe, even with a divided Congress, um, we can make progress on um, congressionally. And that means things like um, taking on the opioid crisis in this country um, or expanding access to, to mental health treatment and dealing with that epidemic as well. So uh, there's a lot on the agenda uh, to come. But first, we have to make sure uh, this legislation passes both the House and the Senate. Yeah, the Senate, a factor here as well, of course. Uh, ben LeBolt, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.